Lesson 2 for October 5 to 11, Nehemiah, read by Dr. Percy Harold. Monday, October 7, Nehemiah's Prayer. Question, read Nehemiah's Prayer found in Nehemiah 1, verses 5 through 11. What are the different components of the prayer? Why does he include himself in the prayer as those who are guilty? Nehemiah 1, beginning at verse 5. And I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments, please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open, that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night, for the children of Israel, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you, and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinances which you commanded your servant Moses. Remember, I pray, the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you were cast out to the father's parts of the heavens, yet... I will gather them from there and bring them to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. Now these are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. O Lord, I pray, please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who desire to fear your name. And let your servant prosper this day, I pray, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. For I was the king's cupbearer. There's an illustration here of a seven-part chiasm, where it starts with 1. God, you are great and have mercy, in verse 5. 2. Hear me, in verse 6. 3. Confession of sins, in verses 6 and 7. 4. Remember your promises, in verses 8 and 9. Going back now, 3, you have redeemed us, in verse 10. 2, hear me, in verse 11. 1, God grant prosperity and mercy, in verse 11. Nehemiah's prayer is a beautiful composition recounting God's greatness, their own sinfulness, and concluding with a cry for help. The prayer resembles the prayer of Daniel in Daniel chapter 9, and it is possible that Nehemiah was familiar with that prayer. It is noteworthy that Nehemiah doesn't begin with a cry for help, but rather first states the truth about who God is, great and awesome. He also points out that God keeps his covenant and has mercy on those who love him, as if to remind God that he has always been faithful, and cannot now be any other way. The prayer is in a special structure, depicted above, that centres on verse 8, where Nehemiah articulates God's promises. Nehemiah says, Remember. In other words, Remember, God, that you promise that you will scatter us when we are unfaithful, but that you also promise to bring us back and restore everything. Since the first one has happened, now it is time to fulfil the other, because we are returning to you. Nehemiah is not afraid to claim God's promises and to remind God of them. Of course, It is not that God doesn't know or remember his promises. Instead, God takes pleasure in our willingness to claim his promises. He wants us to believe in them and thus speak them out loud to him. By verbalizing what God has promised us, we can be strengthened in our own resolve to trust in those promises, especially at times when everything seems hopeless. And to finish the day... What are some of God's promises that you can claim for yourself right now? Why is it important never to give up claiming those promises? After all, if you do give up, what's left? This week's lesson has been read by Dr Percy Harold from Queensland, Australia. It is brought to you by Hope Channel, the Sabbath School Department and through the services of Christian Services for the Blind. A video of this podcast also occurs on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.